Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. So in today's video, I'm continuing my series on why the Toyota 4Runner is such a reliable truck. We're going to take a deep dive in every component and in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the transmission. In part one, we talked about the evolution of the 1GRFE engine. If you missed that, I will leave the link for that right here. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on the A750 five-speed automatic transmission that came with the V6 models of these trucks all the way from 2010 to 2021, the current generation 4Runner. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's go check out the transmission. So a brief history on the transmission of the 4Runner. So it's A750 E or F. The E is for the two-wheel drive model, the F is for the four-wheel drive model, and we'll talk about the slight difference between the two. So the 4Runner's transmission, or this A750 generation of the transmission, is basically 2003 technology. Because this transmission actually came out in 2003 for the previous generation 4Runner to this. It is exactly the same. It's a five-speed automatic transmission, non-complicated. There is no new technology with it. It's basically exactly the same. The way it operates inside since 2003, nothing has changed. And this is why this thing is extremely, extremely reliable. You look at auto manufacturers today, they're all freaking out. They all have all their teams assembled at highest alert with the uh, how many gears can we jam in the smallest eco box car? How many more gears can we have? There's eight and 10 and 12 and whatever the case may be. The forerunner, nah, five is good enough from 2003. And we wonder why it's so reliable. So the inside of the transmission on the 4Runner. Things were different in 2003. Today we have the races of who can get the better emissions and better MPGs and all this. So the transmissions are rapidly changing, getting more compact, getting smaller, getting all kinds of changes to make them more efficient and push that little, just tiny drops of efficiency out of them so they can get you that better gas mileage. You know, if you are a Toyota fan, you know about the eight-speed woes and everybody complaining about them. Well, the 4Runner didn't get that memo because the five-speed transmission in the 4Runner is, again, ancient. Let's talk about exactly how ancient it is. Now, back when the dinosaur was walked and the 1955 Chevy was a grocery getter car or a family car, not an antique hot rod, transmissions had no electronics. They were all mechanical. But the transmission in the 4Runner is actually electronically controlled. And usually that makes people wonder, well, how come it's so reliable then? We know that electronics and transmissions usually cause problems. Well, it's been the same recipe since 2003, and it's actually a very simple one. There was absolutely no effort to make anything compact, small, efficient. No, everything was made to be as strong as possible and as functional as possible. This transmission is so basic electronically wise that it doesn't even have its own computer. It just has a little computer part of the engine computer because it was not even worthy of being its own computer. So the 4Runner transmission, mechanically speaking, have three clutch packs, has four brakes or clamps or bands or whatever you want to call them. And then it has three one-way clutches. It has three planetary sets, one in the front, one in the center, one in the rear, and then it has a valve body, a valve body that is enormous and very liberate with its size because there was, again, no effort to make it small, compact, and complicated. It's actually very simple. So electronically speaking, on the 4Runner transmission, there are 11 electrical components inside the transmission other than the wires. 
So you got two speed sensors, you got two temperature sensors, and there's seven solenoids. So the speed sensors, there's an input speed sensor and an output speed sensor. It uses that to calculate the ratio and know when to make shifts so it knows what kind of speed we're getting from the engine and what kind of speed we're actually sending to the wheels. The temperature sensors are very obvious. They just measure the temperature of the transmission so it would know where everything is at and it'll actually take an average of the two temperatures at two different locations to get an actual transmission temperature. Let's talk about the solenoids. So there are actually two types of solenoids, different component, different design, if you would. So there is four of the main kind, which actually control fluid pressure as well as, as flow. They have a spool valve. The other type, which there are three, are just three-way valves. They just direct fluid in two different locations, and that's about it. So the way all this mess operates, if you would, all we're doing here, and we're not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend to going on how an automatic transmission works in this video, but all they do is just direct fluid to different clutches, hold this, let this spin, hold that, and just change. And actually every automatic transmission has something called a flow chart, where it tells you in which gear, in each gear, what is applied, what is held, and what is free spinning. Having said that, all these components are ancient, they're old, they're, there has been absolutely no effort to make them any more compact, lightweight, save money on production. No, they're huge, they're made out of metal, and they're really, really bulletproof. I mean, they went so much with the little solenoids, the three-way valves, they have a filter in them in case the fluid is dirty and in case the regular transmission filter, which by the way, they do have them, gets, passes something. There is that other filter in three of the solenoids. This thing is built like a tank and there is absolutely no effort in making this any more economical. It was built like a tank from 2003 and it's still going till today. So the only other mechanical change that happened between the older version and the newer version, if you would. All the solenoids, all the electronics, they're all exactly the same. But what really changed is when we got away from the dipsticks, we went to the sealed transmission. Folks, just for reference, you know, we just said that this transmission hasn't changed at all, at all, all these years. So when Toyota comes out and says, oh, by the way, this is a sealed transmission, you never have to change the fluid in, in the transmission's life. You can tell where this is going. Folks, if you have a 2010 and up and it says sealed for life, never have to change fluid, please change it every 60,000 or six years. This is a transmission from 2003. There was absolutely nothing changed inside to make it lifetime fluid. So if you own one of these things, 60,000, six years, and this transmission could easily outlast you and me. I'm dead serious. These are very reliable transmissions. On the outside, electronically, there's also not much. There's just the neutral safety switch on the side, which this is a small downfall to this transmission. The way that thing is mounted, it is notorious to get water inside the wires, and it is generally in a place where it could easily get hit and damaged, actually. And it is a common problem for forerunners to have park neutral safety switch issues. And what did Toyota do to fix that? Nothing. We're not changing a thing. If this transmission was born with this very minor, super easy five minute job to pull the neutral safety switch and put a new one, and it remains the same. They didn't bother changing anything. This thing is ancient and it remains ancient with its good stuff and bad stuff. And trust me, if there is any transmission out there that the only bad thing about it is an occasional park neutral safety switch malfunction, we're in good shape. This transmission folks, is indestructible. I, my entire career, I have not seen a single Forerunner transmission fail from just normal wear and tear. It's usually wrong fluid. It's usually somebody really pushed the envelope with it. Something beyond abuse for them to really have issues. But I think we have done two torque converters from contaminated fluids and uh, that's about it. Speaking of torque converters, 
again, that's another one that is very simple. It just has one solenoid that when the computer decides, okay, I like that, things in 2003 look okay, let's apply the uh, torque converter. It's just gonna activate one solenoid, one of the pressure controlling solenoids to apply that torque converter. There is none of the apply the torque converter like the modern cars at 25 miles an hour and all that mess. None of that. It'll come on when you're at highway cruising speeds and that's about it. The five speeds of this transmission. You have one, two, and three are underdrive. Fourth gear is direct drive and fifth gear is overdrive. Very simple. Folks, this transmission is extremely simple to work on, to service, to do anything on it. And this is why this transmission is really indestructible and it's bulletproof. And this is one of the biggest things. This is a big heavy truck and it is used for floor wheeling. And it's going to get some heavy use, some towing, some rough terrain if you would. But the transmission has no problems because it's from 2003. They just kept making the same transmission, getting all their suppliers and all their parts inside that transmission continuously improved until there's a point where there's nothing else to improve because everything is near perfect. Nothing is perfect mechanical, but near perfect. I don't think there is any transmission out there that has had this long of a lifespan and it is good from day one and good today after all this long lifespan. Folks, if you own a Fall Runner, I hope this video helped you learn a little bit about the transmission. Yes, it is electronically controlled, but it's possibly one of the most reliable transmissions I've ever seen and I'll ever see with the eight speeds and 10 speeds now that there are becoming the norm. Looking at a five speed in 2021 is just mind boggling. And that's why the Forerunner transmission is so reliable. Very simple, because it's ancient from 2003 to be exact. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope this gives you an idea on how this transmission is, some of the details inside of it. I know we didn't go in complete depth where we took one apart and showed you exactly everything, but I hope this gives you an idea that the new Forerunner doesn't exactly have a new transmission. It's the same transmission from 2003. Folks, in the next part of this video, which will be very interesting to you, I'm going to talk about the four-wheel drive system in this truck. We're going to go over how it works a little bit because this seems to be a lot of misconceptions and how the thing works. And then we're going to go into why it is bulletproof. And you guessed it, 2003 is going to be in that conversation. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next part of this series, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.